and welcome! Today we're talking about Elizabeth Holmes, founder of the company Theranos and now chief executive officer of a 2 by 3 meter prison cell. Holmes started out, as all good entrepreneurs do, with an idea and the willpower to see it through. You founded this company 12 years ago, right? Yeah. Tell them how old you were. I was 19. I was 9 years old when I wrote this and it begins, Dear Daddy, what I want out of life is to discover something new, something that mankind didn't know was possible. Well, given her daddy was a VP at Enron, I suppose it's true when they say that the fraud doesn't fall far from the tree. But unfortunately for Holmes, after the Wall Street Journal posted a scathing article about her business, she decided to double down and boldface lie on national TV about it. Elizabeth, I have to tell you, in all my years, I can't recall a private company that I have to candidly many have never heard of getting this kind of attention and scrutiny. What do you think is going on here? This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. I prefer that quote more when it came from Mahatma Gandhi. But knowing Holmes, she'd probably lie, say she came up with it, and then falsely accuse Gandhi for having manipulated her into using it. So why are we talking about Elizabeth Holmes? Well, because it goes to the point of how the fuck did she convince a very large number of supposedly very smart people for a very long period of time that she had a product that was supposed to do one thing and didn't do that thing, putting a large number of people's lives in jeopardy along the way. It's not like her product was a Swiss army knife and a corkscrew part didn't work. The entire fucking thing didn't work. So in this video, we're going to be looking at who Elizabeth Holmes is, how the fraud happened, and why no one picked up on it sooner. So to start, let's look at a brief brief history of Holmes. I actually originally did not intend to drop out of Stanford, but I wasn't going to any classes and I was spending all of my time talking to VCs. And so then logistically it just seemed like a waste of money because I was, you know, taking 20 units and I wasn't showing up, so I'm... Um... Wasting money and not showing up is probably the slogan Holmes had sitting around the office. But after she dropped out, it was radio silence until 2013, after an entire decade of working in the dark, Holmes introduced Edison to the world via press appearances and a new website. But as soon as 2014, commentators had already started asking questions of Holmes's product, noting that there was still no peer review in any medical journals about Edison or its viability, prompting this Wall Street Journal article, which is credited for sparking her downfall. Now, at this point in time, Theranos was valued at $9 billion, making her company worth as much as Yamaha, Capcom, and Dolby, the creators of the most intimidating sound on the planet. Holy shit. Then in 2015, Forbes named her the youngest and wealthiest self-made female billionaire on the planet. Although Forbes does have a habit of doing exposés on people who eventually turn out to be frauds. Martin Shkreli, America's most hated man, Sam Bankman Freed, Crypto's bad boy, and now Elizabeth Holmes or Eagle One, as was her codename, probably in reference to this very expensive coffee machine. I imagine swindling investors out of hundreds of millions of dollars requires a good caffeine hit in the morning. Now, it's hard to point to a specific point in time when the fraud began, but really, it all started with the voice. And no, I'm not talking about the adult version of musical chairs. I'm talking about this. We talked to our lab team and they said, okay, you can do the draw. And so they did this, what would have been a finger stick on this little nub on his arm. Over the last 11 years, we've reinvented the traditional laboratory infrastructure with a mission to make early diagnosis and early detection her attempt at the deeper voice reminds me of, Hi, uh, this is Billy's father speaking. Billy won't be able to make it into school today. He's got stuff to build and, uh, what's that? Oh, okay. And, uh, women to please? Oh yeah, they bought it. But according to the Wall Street Journal article that first highlighted the systemic fraud, it appears that in early 2014, Theranos had realized that Edison wasn't going to work ever and doubled down on their lies, including to regulators. The key part of the article reads as follows. In early 2014, Theranos split some of the proficiency testing samples it got into two pieces. According to internal emails reviewed by the journal, one was tested with Edison machines and the other with instruments from other companies. The two types of equipment gave different results when testing for vitamin D, two thyroid hormones, and 
prostate cancer. The gap suggested to some employees that the Edison results were off, according to the internal emails and people familiar with the findings. Senior lab employees showed both sets of results to Sunny Balwani, Theranos' president and chief operating officer at the time. In an email, one employee said he had read through the regulations more finely and asked which results should be reported back to the test administrators and government. Mr. Balwani replied the next day copying in Ms. Holmes. I am extremely irritated and frustrated by folks with no legal background taking legal positions and interpretations on these matters. He wrote, this must stop. He added that the samples should have never run on Edison to begin with. Former employees say Mr. Balwani ordered lab personnel to stop using Edison machines on any of the proficiency testing samples and report only the samples from instruments bought from other companies. So it seems that Mr. Balwani was on a bit of a journey. First he lied to investors about the efficacy of the product, then he lied to regulators about it, then he lied to himself that he was a good COO, and that Sonny was a great nickname for a man whose face has the combined look of an angry 7-Eleven owner meets disappointed dad. So let's watch how Holmes defended against the claims made by the Wall Street Journal in an interview with the Wall Street Journal. So if I went to one of the centers and I got a pinprick, Mm -hmm. um, and I only gave that much blood, mm -hmm. right? What tests are yeah. you currently able to perform for that blood using anything other than commercially available lab equipment? So we have never used commercially available lab equipment for finger stick based tests. Okay. Every finger stick test that we have ever done uses proprietary Theranos technology that is not commercially available. Well, that's one way to contort the truth more than in a heated game of Twister, where all the players are Olympic fucking gymnasts. What Holmes is saying is technically true. The blood taken from the prick was only evaluated by her technology. But after that, when the real evaluation had to be done because hers didn't fucking work, then they would use someone else's technology. A genius bit of black magic wordery there. Bravo. Of the 240 tests that Edison claimed they were able to do, it could only do 18 of them, and with such varied results that you'd be better off just guessing. Take a look at this chart of a single patient's results using Theranos versus the hospital's results. In every single one of Theranos' results, you're apparently already dead. Of course, in the middle of all this are patients whose health depended on Theranos for accurate results. There's this um, uh, man who goes by the initials RC right now in Arizona who is suggesting that the lab results that he got from Theranos were not accurate and it led to him having a heart attack. Based on what you know, is it possible that what he's saying is true? Could he have gotten a lab result that was so askew that he didn't act on it and then a month later he ended up having a heart attack? I'm not the lab director and so... I know, but you're the CEO and founder of the company. I mean, this yeah. is as serious as it gets. What I know is that I've, I've put the best people in place to be able to uh, investigate every aspect of this and ensure that we meet the quality standards that we hold ourselves to. And that's tragic that someone who relied on the results of Theranos died because of it. So the standards that Holmes must be referring to are the same ones that the aforementioned school must have had to have believed in such a bullshit phone call. The lie all came crumbling down in 2014 and 2015 when the FDA started to scrutinize the reports that Holmes was dishing out. A study of Edison's blood testing in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, authored by 13 independent scientists, found that the company's blood results were outside of their normal range by 1.6 times as often as other testing services, and that 68% of evaluated lab measurements showed significant inter-service variability. Going on to say that the lipid panel test results between Theranos and other clinical services were non-equivalent. Theranos' test results are about as non-equivalent as a Nescafe instant coffee and the brown gold that comes out of the Eagle One, because nothing says we aren't equal more than getting your coffee from a machine that costs about the same as Bill Cosby's legal bills. So how did she get away with the fraud for so long? Well, Holmes had managed to do the following, not have an avenue for external complaints, have no internal quality audits, ignore internal staff concerns, boldface lie to regulators, and at an investor meetings, she would say that her machines didn't work because someone tripped over a cord, the adult equivalent of the dog ate my homework. But it wasn't just investors in the general public that Holmes managed to fool. So but still, the marketing myth continued. And you make a decision to do something, you do it. And that's it. A previously non-existent lab was created, filled with as many of the black boxes the company could find. Then, Vice President Joe Biden was invited to inspect. 
This is sort of the laboratory of the future. Unaware the devices didn't work and that he, along with the world, was being conned. Sleepy Joe was probably more concerned with finding a nice place to nap while awaiting his test results for Alzheimer's. But that was the evil genius of Holmes, perpetuating the lie to greater and greater height in order to outpace the critics. And you may be asking yourself, but where was the oversight of all of this? Surely there was some kind of responsible board of directors. And you'd be right, there was. But let's read the list of their names and see if you can figure out what's going on here. William Perry, former US Secretary of Defense. Henry Kissinger, former US Secretary of State. Sam Nunn, former US Senator. Bill Frist, former US Senator. Gary Ruffhead, Admiral. Jim Mattis, General. Richard Kovacevic, former Wells Fargo Chairman and CEO. And Riley P. Betchell, Chairman of the Board and former CEO of the Betchell Group. There was one qualified medical practitioner amongst a group of people you'd only find to expect at a charity luncheon for Ron DeSantis' favorite deportation service or a whites only knitting group. None of them wanted to, nor had the qualifications to be able to challenge Holmes on what was going on. And I would be so bold as to say that their ongoing part ownership and investment in the company depended on it. I think it was a, a deliberate choice of Elizabeth's to focus on uh, what I would call uncharitably the dumb money, the uh, uh, billionaires and their family offices, as opposed to the uh, sophisticated Silicon Valley venture funds, who I don't think they would have fallen for, for the same lies. What do you think of the investors who lined up to, to give her nearly a billion dollars worth of money? Older white men. I'm telling you, I've said it, brains going south. They weren't thinking with their brains, is what you're saying? Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know, and they believed her. And she could be charming. She could be, I'm sure. It just didn't charm me, but she could be charming to older men. Oh, budget Judy Dench laying the smack down on my future namesake. But as much as I disagree with her skin routine, her point is valid. The board and investors were made up of people who didn't want to know what was going on at Theranos. They just wanted to make money. And that's really what this all boils down to. Investors and people with ownership stakes are there to make money. And that means they will silence the internal critics, reject complaints from external parties, turn the other cheek when they know of lies to regulators, and pour more money into the cauldron in hopes that the product will eventually surface, thereby nullifying all the previous wrongdoings. The ultimate in the end justifies the means. And so, after being found guilty on a raft of charges, Holmes has very recently reported to the jail where she will be spending the next 11 years of her life. Elizabeth Holmes taking her last steps of freedom. Holmes reporting for her 11-year sentence after being found guilty last January of four counts of wire fraud in connection to the now infamous blood testing scam in her company, Therano. What do you dream for? that less people have to say goodbye too soon to people they love. It's an odd statement from someone who's just left their two children, one being only three months old, to enjoy the next decade in a room full of other women drinking coffee that to the Eagle One looks more like a scene from a hit and run. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why not check out some of my other videos guaranteed to make you learn and hopefully laugh. Thank you for watching and may God go with you.